This is a confidence interval question. The question in the end asks us to calculate a 95% confidence interval in part A. So what's the information we have? We're having a random sample of 15, so here is the value for n, pupils attending a certain school, and it's found that in that sample on average there's a measure of IQ, however dubious any IQ measures are, of 107.3. So let's write down what we have. We have x bar is equal to 107.3. We have a sample size of 15 and we have a sample variance. So that is s squared of 32.5. So then calculate 95% confidence interval for the unknown population mean IQ, stating any some assumptions you need to make. So the idea here is that X is distributed and is distributed somehow. We don't have any information and it has a mean mu and we want to calculate a confidence interval for mu and there's some variance sigma squared, but we don't know the variance. So when we don't know the variance and we don't know the uh, and, and we don't know the distribution, then really we're in the end relying on having to estimate that population variance with our sample variance S squared. So we know that to calculate a confidence interval, which in general will work like this, X bar, it will be centered around our sample mean plus minus something that something will come from the distribution of x bar it's sort of a um a value coming from the sampling distribution of x bar times the standard error of x bar so that standard error here in our case because we don't have sigma squared we will have to use our sample estimate s squared we divide by n and take this square root that is going to be our standard error of x bar if we are estimating the sampling vari the population variance with s bar then we know that the distribution of x bar is one of two things it's either t distributed if x is normally distributed or it is normally distributed standard normally distributed but only for large samples and that's when the central limit theor theorem kicks in now what's our sample size our sample size is 15 so we will have to rule out, out this possibility because we certainly don't have a large sample. That means if we want to proceed here, we will have to make this assumption here. We will have to assume that X is normally distributed. Okay, remember the question says stating any assumption you need to make. So we have to assume, so we assume that X is normally distributed. And the reason we need that is to figure out what the sampling distribution of X bar is at our sample size, given we had to approximate the variance with the sample variance. So we assume that X is normally distributed and then that value here comes from the T distribution with n minus one decrease of freedom. And we need the value from the T distribution that cuts off alpha half, um, a probability of alpha half in the tail. So we can, um, we can move on now from here. So that X bar is 107.3 plus minus. So now we need that value if we look at the T table, let's load that up, the T table with 
14 degrees of freedom because we are having 15 observations so 15 minus 1 so that's here and we want the value that cuts off what we are having a 95 percent confidence interval so we two-tailed 95 that means two-tailed we need a probability of 0 0.5 coming up that's two and a half in each tail or one tailed that would be two and a half percent cut off so 14 so that's this value here 2.145 so just graphically that will be if we have a t distribution so if that is t14 value of 2.145 and negative 2.145 they cut off each two and a half percent in the tail so that's our value here 2.145 and then times the square root of our sample variance 32.5 divided by the sample size 15. so if we calculate that what we get is we get an interval of 104.143 comma 110 457 okay so that would be our 95 percent confidence interval let's draw a um, a line here so here we have a line we have our sample average of 107.3 and then that confidence interval let's give it a little green color of 104.1 to 110.5 approximately 110.5 so if now let's move to part b of the question explain whether you would be happy with a parent's claim that the average iq at the school is 113 well 113 that value here is somewhere over here right that would be 113 our 95 percent confidence interval is here so we would say well that 113 that's outside our confidence interval we would therefore not confirm that the sample information that we've been given is supportive of that of that claim by the student it turns out that that actually means if you calculate that 95 percent confidence interval that if you were to test a hypothesis that mu is equal to 113 against the alternative hypothesis that mu is unequal to 113 at an alpha of 0 0.05 we are looking at the same alpha as we used for the calculation of the confidence interval we would reject h naught okay so if you calculate the 95 percent confidence interval and the value of the null hypothesis here 113 is not included in that confidence interval then you know if i tested this set of hypotheses a two-tailed test center around that 113 we would not or we would reject the null hypothesis 